Hi, my name is Dan Keen from Spitfire Audio. Today's a big one, how to compose in the style of Hans Zimmer. In particular, his organ-centric score to 2014 sci-fi epic Interstellar. Now, I've written a contextual piece using symphonic organ, which is the highlight for the month of September, which means you can save 30% until the end of this month. And you should stay to the end because I'm going to release a hidden gem within this library that really helped elevate my piece to the next level. Now, I want to preface this video by saying that I don't know a single media composer who hasn't once been asked to write in the style of Hans Zimmer. And while this has led to many imitators, I don't want to be one of those people who characterizes someone's work. So just know that I've been inspired by the score in writing this piece, um, but that you'll definitely hear some DK-isms in there as well. Okay, let's have a listen. Okay, so there's a lot going on in that piece and I'm gonna break it down section by section. Um, but because this is a highlight video, I'm gonna begin with the star of the show, which is the organ. Now in Interstellar and in this piece, the organ kind of functions in three main ways. We've got texture, the kind of little rhythms and momentum. We've got grandeur, the kind of massive scale pipes and pedals at the bottom. And then we've got what Christopher Nolan describes as mankind's attempt to portray the mystical. It's not supposed to sound religious, but it just adds to the scale. And if I were to add a fourth kind of dimension to this library, I'd say it's color from the softest ethereal swells all the way up to all stops out. There's a great breadth of tone that can really help enhance the emotion and the energy in your score. So if we start with texture, I have this little motif which I opened with. And this is then reinforced later by the non-interstellar flutes. And so just in context, it sounds like this. Now this functions in two main ways. For starters, it adds a sense of momentum which wouldn't otherwise have been there. So if I just mute those layers.
we don't have that sense of energy yet. We don't know quite where it's going. We don't know what the tempo is, um, as it's fairly kind of ambiguous at the beginning. But the other thing is it's a group of 12 notes, so a feel of three within a 4-4 four, four time signature. So it's constantly pushing the emphasis off kilter with the arrangement which works in a couple of ways. I think what would otherwise be quite a boring, repetitive motif stays quite fresh in the ear, but also it adds to the uneasy, maybe slightly unpredictable nature of us being in space. There are lots of unknowns there. Speaking of uneasy, I then decided with the second part of the melody, which is pretty much the same, to kind of duplicate it on the low pedals. And that sounds like this. which in context sounds like this. Now in Interstellar, there's very little percussion, um, in fact, hardly any at all. So other than the little kind of rhythmic pulse of the colenio, we're totally freed up to do whatever we want. And so by having the melody right at the top and at the very bottom as well, we've got this very broad, very grand sounding frequency spectrum, which means we've got lots of space in the middle to kind of pad out the harmony. And so I've got my kind of textural rhythmic uh, motif, which I spoke about before, but then I'm adding in this Dirty York Way, which is a, a warped layer from the organ library as well. It also gives space to the rest of the orchestration, which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes. So then as we move through the piece, as, it, as the tension builds more, I'm bringing in this full organ, which if you listen to that on its own, sounds like this. This is probably the most kind of traditional element of the score. In fact, if I just play the organs on their own, you'll hear how much it adds to the arrangement. And we'll get to that drop in a moment. Uh, if I just play the same thing, but uh, with everything else. So we haven't given away too much yet, but as I said about colour, by adding this full congregation ensemble as well, you really hear that kind of natural light at the very top. Which when we combine it with everything else, sounds like this. So if we just break some of those down, we've still got our rhythmic motif. But you'll see by this point, we've moved into 4-4. Four, four. So it's a little bit more kind of affirmed, it's a little bit stronger. Um, and we've got the same thing happening in the non-interstellar flutes as well. Now, a key thing that really helped to kind of bring out the sense of punch and energy in this piece was to actually give a little bit of daylight between the bass notes. And I think the reason for this is because if something's kind of pedal to the metal, kind of limited all the way through, you don't get a sense of the contrast between light and shade. And so if you listen to this part on its own here... It really adds a lot of punch to the mix, especially when we add this layer as well. The other thing I just wanted to mention here is this pitched full. Um, if I just play this on its own. So 
So this is just using Little Alter Boy, and I've just got it automated so that it goes down by a whole octave. Um, now, I think Hans Zimmer does this for a couple of reasons in his score. The first is it feels like there's a long way to fall. You know, that sense of being in space is very big, so I've kind of put it through a really big reverb. But the other thing is, with any one of these sweeps, there will be a frequency in any room where it just really hits. Um, and so, really, it's just a kind of add impact more than anything else. So now I've gone through the organ, I'm just going to show you quickly how I've kind of contextualized this with the rest of the orchestra using elements that I picked out from Hans Zimmer's score to Interstellar. One thing that I saw that he used a lot is he'd take instruments into a very kind of fragile part of their range. So I opened with Albion Tundra, and this is the ricochets, and I think this is really underrated as a sound. Have a listen to this. So it's really gentle, and all you have to do is just kind of hold down a couple of notes. And it does it all for you. It's kind of crazy. When you combine that then with these harmonics as well, you really get the feeling of kind of isolation. Um, so if we just play this on its own. and then in combination with the ricochets. And this is supported nicely by a really soft ethereal swell. Then to add to that sense of fragility, I just got a single horn here, uh, which is, this is from the symphonic brass. And I then combine that with an alto flute, which again is higher than its typical range. I've then combined this as well with the Tundra Colenio Trato. So this is the wood of the bow, um, which is a very quiet, fragile sound. But when you play it with lots of players, it just builds up this kind of um, almost scratchy kind of texture, but it, it just adds a lot of texture in that kind of upper frequencies. And this gentle texture matches really well against the organ. I've also got the Olafur Arnold Stratus Swarms 3, which is one of my favorite patches to use. Now this creates a real kind of blurred texture, which is brought into focus by the BBC SO, which sounds like this. And to add to that sense of fragility, I've used the Chili really, really high up in their range as well. And so there's very little kind of um, grounding in the music until we get this big pedal that enters here. I've used Hans Zimmer Piano here. This is the scrapes drag from the percussion section. And I've just pitched this and then distorted it slightly. And it just adds a really nice kind of pinging release. It kind of ricochets off into the next section. So if I just solo this alongside the clarinets and oboes from Symphonic Woodwinds, you'll hear what I'm trying to achieve here.
Now, these clarinets and oboes are also inspired by Interstellar. You'll just hear them fairly quietly in the score, but they are there and they just help to, again, leaning into the kind of fragile, maybe slightly vulnerable nature of the film. Um, have a listen to these on their own. So it's just a little call and response, but it's through quite a big reverb, so it kind of beds into the mix quite well. I've used hands and strings here just to add a little bit of pulsing with the colenio. Um, so I'm using the, the 60 celli and then the violins as well. and it's playing that same motif that you'd have heard in the organ earlier. Now the strings have a lot more focus. I'm bringing in the basses as well, and they're playing that same melody really low. In typical hands with fashion, I'm taking a little kind of ostinato that's just going in quietly. You shouldn't be able to hear it at the very beginning, but it just helps to add a little bit of intrigue to the harmony, but also add a little bit more momentum as well. Going back to the brass, I'm using symphonic brass here with the cimbasso, the bass trombone and the tuba doing this nice long held note which helps to uh, reinforce the notes that I've got in the organ as well. Now I mentioned before that there isn't much percussion in Interstellar. There was just something missing from the low end though, so I decided to take a low boom from Hans Zimmer percussion and then stretch it out, tune it down a little bit and we get this. It's fairly simple. But then in this section where I've got the low uh, sweep that goes down, I've also stretched this out even more and that just helps to kind of add to the, the shaking sub feel. which in context sounds like this. And then to reinforce the melody, I've got six horns playing with the long quivre articulation, which is really, really strong. If you just have a listen to this. which in context sounds like this. Now at the very end of the piece here, I wasn't quite sure what to do, whether I should play the same melody again, but even bigger, even louder. And then I thought, no, there's one thing I haven't yet emulated from the Interstellar score, and that is to have a repeating uh, piano note with a single melody over the top. So that's what I decided to do using Olaf Arnold's Felt Grand. So in here, when you play a note particularly hard, you, um, you hear the pad coming through. And I really liked that, but I didn't like having to hit the piano so hard. So instead, I then created a second mix where I just have the pad on its own. And then I've EQ'd it slightly. So I remove some of the kind of transient of hitting the note. So on its own sounds like this.
So when you combine the two together, you get those harmonics, but you also get a fairly um, soft sounding piano. I'm also combining it with Albion Solstice. This is the Bode Nursery. Which again just feeds into that feeling of fragility and vulnerability. Now my hidden gem is that I've created some long releases and I've done this by using the effects in Symphonic Organ. So I've taken the stop noise, which if I unsolo the region it started with, sounds like this. Now, I'm not so interested in the beginning of the noise, it's more the tail afterwards. And I would believe that after a note finishes, there is that sense of kind of release and then into the next note. And so what I've done in this big kind of louder section is I've created a couple of recordings just by bouncing it in place, stretching it out, and then using a low cut filter to remove some of those low frequencies. So the long releases sound like this. And then the short ones sound like this. Which might sound a bit strange on their own, but when you combine it with the open wood pedals, you'll see that actually it kind of goes in between those notes. And this really does make a big difference in context. So let me just play the whole thing from here. I think that makes it sound more realistic because it emulates the sound of the air passing through the pipes. So that's just about it. As I say, you can save 30% on Symphonic Organ for this month of September. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and hit subscribe if you haven't done already. We've got loads of really exciting things coming soon. See you next time.